Good afternoon, beloved. Welcome back for another session of Women of Purpose. We missed you. It seemed like it's been a while whenever there's five, five Saturdays in a month. But praise God. Praise God for all things. Welcome back again. So I hope that you've had a blessed week. I have. This is Reverend Dr. Yes. Cynthia Woods, and I'm here before you today. This is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I am so grateful for another day of life. Well, today, beloved, I have some wonderful woman of God on the show with me today. She just radiates love. I can't say that enough. She just exuberates love. Because today, we want to have to have a talk topic and talk about uh, becoming tired and giving up. But we don't want to give up, right? But that's the topic, uh, becoming tired and wanting to give up. But we have Lynette Hagens here with us today, who's going to come in and we're going to welcome her. Let, let, me, let me just share a little bit about her before she comes in. She's a mother, a wife, praise and worship leader, a boss of all these titles. And uh, she is a survivor of a suicide attempt. Yes. Love, self-esteem, and rejection. Lynette's latest endeavor is She Found Her Ministries. Recently founded is a woman's ministry designed to help hurting women like herself find themselves again through a different lens. She Found Her was birthed out of Lynette's own experience of having low self-esteem, not feeling good enough, not worthy, rejected, unloved. Doesn't that sound like some of our journeys too? Yes. Um, and her desire is to give others like her a soft place to land, a platform to express without judgment and an environment to start their healing process. So her ministry of She Found Her was birthed during the middle of the pandemic. So God really used her. I love her motto. Her motto is that she is to love like she's never been hurt. Oh, that just melts my heart. Welcome, Lynette. God bless you. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you on today. I'm excited about what God is doing, and I'm excited about what God is going to do on today. I have great expectations. Oh, Thank I you. know. Yes. Thank he's you. always showing up doing something wonderful. He's right? amazing. Yes, he is. He is. Yes, he is. He's so awesome. Mm -hmm. Each day, I'm just so grateful about how he reveals uh, different things to me and different layers in life that I really hadn't, you know, thought about until I, you know, I just press into him and focus on him. And he, he shows me something new every day. My, yes. My earthly father always says, keep living, keep learning. Yes. And so that's what I enjoy about life, yes. that it's a learning process. Yes. I'm glad to be here again on today. I'm just excited about the journey that God has taken me through, but that he has brought me through. I'm excited about what he has put in me. Um, I'm excited about all my tests and all my trials. Um, I'm excited that I can sit here today and say that God has freed me from so many things, especially from the thoughts of suicide and not feeling worth, um, not feeling worthy, not feeling loved. Um, I'm just excited. I'm excited to just talk about it. Okay. I'm excited to share um, your worth. You are worthy no matter what anybody mm -hmm. else says. Mm -hmm. Once you start focusing on yourself and that self-care and self-love, it will all come together. And you keep Christ first, he will bring it all together. So I'm excited. Absolutely. I agree wholeheartedly. Absolutely. And on Women of Purpose, we like to talk about the purpose that we have found in our lives that God has set for us. We didn't always know it. Didn't I know I can only speak for myself. I didn't always know it. It was a journey for me through life. Mm -hmm. I had to, as I grew in the word, as I grew in my relationship with the Lord, as I grew in spending time with him, then he revealed 
what the purpose was. It started to unfold to me more. It's always been there because as I can think back now over my life, yes. it's always been there. But life has its disappointments. Life has its up and downs. I, too, went through a low self-esteem time in my life. as Growing up as a young girl, I can think back and remember moments. And so we like to talk about the purpose that God has placed in your life. I know when we spoke um, the other day, you mentioned we shouldn't devalue our purpose, and that stuck with me. Talk about that, and devaluing our purpose. Talk about your purpose and then how we shouldn't devalue our purpose. So my purpose, um, which sometimes we don't find out our purpose until we go through some things, and I really believe that um, for me, my purpose was when things kept coming back to me. So, you know, the low self-esteem or um, being able to talk to others about it, low self-esteem, self-love, not feeling wanted. But then when it came time to give those things back to myself, there was an emptiness there. And so during the pandemic, um, you're going about uh, before the pandemic, you know, you're moving, you're going, you're shuffling, you're toggling, you're taking care of the family, you're taking care of your job, you're at church, and, and then there was a shutdown. And then with the shutdown with me, because I'm a person that gives, and I'm a person that's always doing for everybody else, I felt lost. And it was at that time just sitting um, and falling back into that state of depression, not being able to give, not being able to, to be there for someone, um, and just going. So it all stopped. And then you're home taking care of the kids. You're taking care of the husband. You're still working. You're homeschooling. And then when everything is quiet, you're so depleted that you don't have time for yourself. And I think I got into a state of falling back into that trap. And I'm like, I got to get up. I got to do something. I have to do what makes me feel good. But then I thought, oh, I'm empty. I'm still empty. I needed God to fill me back up. And I needed God to show me that if there's nobody there, he's still there. If there's nobody there to validate me, he's already validated me. He's already said that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. So through that, I'm like, oh, I think she's getting it together. So I started getting up in the morning like I would get up and go to work. I started getting dressed to go to work from home. And then I started, people thought, you know, the posting of the pictures, because I would post pictures all the time on Facebook, but they thought it was just to show a new outfit. But it was really just to show that in spite of everything that goes on, yes, you're beautiful on the outside, but if you don't feel that in the inside, once you take off all of those layers, you're still empty. So I was asking God to fill me up again to renew me again, to renew my mind, to renew my strength, to give me my joy back, to give me my love back. And guess what? That started with me. And that's when she found her, came into fruition. Give me my joy back. Give me my strength back. And, you know, it's something how we don't start there. Even though we were raised in good homes, raised with a loving family, mm -hmm. good background, always supported, encouraged, but still, there's something that just is there that we feel, well, we know that there's a void. God places a void within mm -hmm. us, and only he can fill it. Absolutely. And we just have this feeling of inadequacy and that low self-esteem. And low self-esteem is just simply, what is your worth? Um, do you know your self-worth? And that's your value, your, you know, your value, your principles about life. Yeah. It's everything that makes you up if you go even further. It looks at your family. Mm -hmm. It looks at uh, uh, where you go to school at. We could even classify it to material things, the things that you like. Somebody can look at something and say, oh, that's Lynette. I know she liked that. So it's all about your self-worth and uh, your value system. And then the um, other branch of self-esteem is talks about what is your your concept, your self-concept. And concept is simply saying, how do I see myself? Absolutely. How do I see myself? Absolutely. Do I see myself as this intelligent, 
beautiful, bright young woman that God loves. I, I'm his daughter. Mm. How do I, I, you know, he will give me the world. He, I'm the apple of his eye. He told me in, in Psalms, I'm the apple of his eye. Mm-hmm. So how do you see yourself? And then lastly is how do you esteem yourself? So how do you feel about yourself? Do you feel that you are living a life that's pleasing unto God? Do you feel good about who you are, the things you do, what you think about, the journey you on? So that wraps up the self-esteem portion yeah. that a lot of us and our young girls, young daughters, young nieces don't have that. And we want to help them get to that because life is going to be filled with disappointments. And so we want to talk about how you were able to, how some of the disappointments that you may have had, and how you were able to work through them and overcome and come on on the other side. So amazingly, you talk about our background of growing up and family, and I have a beautiful legacy of my grandfather, the late Bishop Robert L. Chapman. Um, he was an example. He exuded love. He, um, and, and even my parents, my parents loved on us. My parents, um, you know, validated us. So it wasn't like, um, I grew up not being validated, but when you grow up, up and then you enter a different stage in your life you try and fit in you um try and find out where you fit in you do try and find out what your purpose is and then I think when life hit me um it was um probably one of the most to me one of the most tumultuous times or period times of my life um and it was how how do I work through that how do I get through this um through this season mm. of my life, you start comparing yourself yes. to others. You start comparing yourself. What do they have that I don't have? What are they doing or what are they saying that I'm not doing or that I'm not saying? Am I not pretty enough? Am I not educated enough? Um, and, and you have to really take a deep, hard look into yourself and the root of the problem of why you don't feel worthy. And I think in my journey, um, I've always, um, or young women have always been um, uh, drawn to me. And, you know, you, you don't really know why, or you can't, sometimes you can't figure out why, but yeah, but I really figured (laughs) out it is because that I love, Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't see, um, I don't see, a a woman that's hooked on drugs. I see a woman that has had a hard life and can't find her way back. Um, I don't Mm. see a woman that um, is promiscuous um, out here doing everything uh, to her life. I look at a woman that what happened for her to get to that place and how can I show her how to get out of that rut and it's not t- by talking about her no. it's not by putting her down it's not by judging her but it's by loving her and that's why I say I always try to love like I've never been hurt and you see the hurt yeah. you see the hurt in that person you see their heart and you see the hurt mm-hmm. and that's how you're able to reach them I put myself oftentimes in their shoes um, because I tell women all the time, you don't know the shoes that I've walked in. Um, you don't know the places that I've been. You only see the outer, but you don't know what my inner has been through. Yes. And with that being said, yes, an attempt at suicide, um, not feeling worth enough, not feeling worthy enough and how do you get through that I was going to church I was praying for others I could bring others through I could help 
But when it came to me, I felt like the world was empty. Like nobody was there. Like nobody could see um, the hurt. And, and that was because we're so good at covering it up. Yes. So I smile all the time. But no one ever would see the hurt that I was in, but because I smile all the time. And I remember somebody saying to me, I was walking out of my building one day and was having a bad day. But when, when I saw just people, I just smiled. And this young lady stopped me and said, you don't know what your smile just did to me. Oh, wonderful. But she didn't know the place that I was in. But with her stopping and saying that to me, it made me feel better because you don't know just what a smile can do for somebody. So I just really believe in meeting people where they are because I could that could have been me or that was me. So who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? Yes, yes. And that smile just connected with her. You didn't know where she was at. She didn't know where you were at. Absolutely. And then you just smiled mm-hmm. and you guys connected. And thank mm-hmm. goodness she shared with you Absolutely. how that was a blessing and what she needed. Absolutely. And that's what's so important when someone is on that journey of a dark place, to be able to reach out, speak out, so that we can help. So we can help. because we, 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 We're, we're going to go there. Let's go there. Let's talk about the importance of being able to to talk about suicide. We've got to do better. We've got to get to a place where we can normalize the conversation, not the suicide, but the conversation so people will speak out. Share with us that, that dark time in your life and how it came about. So... Um as I said it before, it was probably one of the toughest um, times of my life. And I talk about it, but I'm, um, I share because I want people to know that you can make it. Um, survivor of a suicide attempt, survivor of infidelity, um, and you know, like I said, lack of love, low self-esteem. And then all of that combined took me to that place. Um, took me to that place of um, sitting at the lake. I can remember calling my grandfather the night before um, and feeling at my lowest. And my grandfather said, I'm going to call you right back. And I'm thinking, if I can't call my granddad and he not just stop what he's doing and pray for me, then I'm in trouble. Um, And so I planned it all out. I, I got up that next morning. I went to the lake. I sat there and um, I was just waiting for it to get dark. I was waiting for it to get dark so that I could walk out to the ledge and just jump. And uh, there was a gentleman that, you'll hear more about it, but there was a gentleman that sat there and watched. He sat there because he must have knew something was wrong for me to sit there and not even get out of my car. Um, And then that moment that I walked out to the ledge, he called 911 and the police came. And I and I remember the words that the police officer was saying to me, um, are you you know, what's going on? Can I talk to you? Can you step back? Um, Do you have children? Do you have a family? Um, And then he said, do you know God? Good. So when he said, do you know God, it caught my it caught attention. Your attention. Oh, wow. It caught so my good. attention. And then he said to me, God is still a healer. God is still a mender of broken hearts. Mm-hmm. And he can help you. Well, that is what captured my attention. Yes, I grew up in the church, praise and worship leader, mm-hmm. you know, background family in the church. But when infidelity hit my household, I just felt like, you know, um, I got it all. Mm-hmm. I have it all. I have the good job. I have the beautiful family. I have a husband. You know, I, I have it all. And then this. And then when something like that um, interferes yes. with your marriage, that's when the self-doubt comes. That's yes. when you um, feel like you're not enough. And not just 
women, men as well. Yes. Men go through it just like yes. women go through it. Um, and, and what did I do wrong? What did it I must do have wrong? Been something I've it, I you blame yourself mm -hmm. or he blames himself. What did he what did he do wrong? What did I do wrong? How can I fix it? How can I get myself back together mm -hmm. from here? And it depleted me. It depleted me. And then I'm telling you when you step into that that place of I got to live. Mm. Okay. I have so much okay. to live for. Hallelujah. I Hallelujah. have so much to live for. I am. And then you start reaffirming yourself. When nobody else is affirming you, you reaffirm yourself. I am beautiful. Yes. I am amazing. Yes. I am loving. I am kind. I am patient. You say those things. And I just started repeating those things um, to myself. And it wasn't that life didn't hit me again. But after that, I had the tools. Yes. I had the tools. And I'll say this. Don't ever think that because you're in the church, because it's so taboo. We don't talk about it. You know, you don't talk about, um, you don't, they don't want to talk about or harp on um, low self-esteem or suicide attempts or, you know, infidelity. It's not something that's talked about it's all not, the time. It's kept quiet. It's, it's, it's kept, kept quiet. It's kept silent, yes. in the dark. We don't want to deal with that. Let's not bring that out. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate because that's where the danger is mm -hmm. when it's not talked about and it's kept in the dark. The monster just grows when it's in the dark. That's what how people are able to act on the suicide mm -hmm. because it's kept in the dark and nobody knows. So now they can carry it out. Mm -hmm. But in your case, praise God, praise God, the fisherman yes. was there. Yes, he, he was. He didn't stay. He stayed and watched. Yes, he did. And called for help. Yes, he did. Yes. I believe silence is a silent killer. When you don't speak out about yes. it when you don't talk yes. about it and when somebody is trying to communicate about it don't just say oh she's crying wolf you know you, you, um she don't mean that she's not going to do anything um it that's not always the case no. there no. are just because you see me happy just because you see me moving forward just because you see, I was functioning in dysfunction I was still going to work I was still taking care of the family. I was still loving on others, but I was so broken. I was so broken in the inside. And and when, you know, I started dwelling on um, um, she found her and I started thinking about that. I'm like, I got to help somebody else. Yes. I got to help somebody else who can't. Um, I, I took this um, this 10 week class getting out of stuck. Oh. And, you know, I'm telling you, it was a phenomenal, it was a phenomenal class that I took. I'm going to post it on my page, too, because it was a phenomenal class that I took. And every time I think I'm getting stuck in a rut, mm -hmm. I think about the tools that I also got out of this class. Um, taboo. And uh, it's not taboo to go and seek counseling. No. I so know. I didn't just pray about it. I didn't just praise my way through it. I also sought counseling. And that was another tool that I used to get over that hump. And that's a tool that I would always tell young women, young men, get counseling. Mm -hmm. Yes, the pastor can pray for you. Your first lady can pray for you. They can lay hands on you. But you need somebody to walk you through that process. Yes. You need to get to the root of the problem. What got you here? What are you dealing with in the inside? And so I always say, hey, I'm not afraid to say I got counseling. I went to get help. Mm -hmm. I needed the tools to help me get through the process. Well, good for you. That is wonderful to hear because a lot of people don't realize they know that they're struggling with something, but because it's something that's different for them, like there may have been things that have happened along in their lives that they've been able to bounce back from. But then this happens, the depression sets in, and they can't pull themselves up by their bootstraps, or something has happened in their life that has mm -hmm. caused so much distress 
and harm mentally, emotionally, and you can't get past it because there's different levels of suicidal thoughts. You know, you've got your low levels, your moderate, your more serious, and then you've got your immediate risk. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot, we don't look at it in the natural like that. Mm -hmm. And you need help to help you with that because if you're thinking of plans or, or, or how I'm going to do this, I have, it, I have it in mind what I'm going to do, when I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, then that's exactly when we need help. Mm -hmm. We need help. You can't handle this on your own. Or if you're just starting to feel like things will be better if I wasn't here. I'm being a burden to others. I don't want to be a burden. Those are some warning signs. So family, friends, li listen to when you're Friends, your loved ones are talking that way. They are letting you know right then that there's something going on with them. And we have to pay attention. We can't dismiss it. We can't say, oh, that's just something you're going through. It's going to get better. Mm -hmm. Or I went through that and I got better. That was okay for you. That's Not right. everyone handles the same things the same way emotionally or mentally. Uh, psychologically and spiritually because mm -hmm. it's a part of that also mm -hmm. so please don't dismiss the person stop listen to what they have to say don't offer solutions they don't need solutions right. they need to you to listen to them and then get them help if you don't know where to start call their call your doctor your physician he will or she will refer you to a counselor or you can call mobile crisis. And later I'm going to put those numbers up on my uh, screen. Um, mobile crisis. You can even text mobile crisis now if you don't want to talk. I think it's 41741. Um, if you don't want to talk, let me verify that. But don't, don't just let it happen. We have to, it's 741 741 mm -hmm. crisis. Um, just 741 741 if you just want to text and not talk. And they'll listen and they will reach out and help you because we've got to start, we got to do better in prevention and helping those. And so um, I'm so glad that the police officer mm -hmm. came and met you where you were. And he even spoke life into he you. He did. He did. And I was actually able to run in to that police officer and thank him again oh um, and and brought back to his memory. And it was he remembered and he remembered the smile, though. I you know, it's so it's so crazy because, you know, um, people might not remember my name, but they remember my smile. And it's funny to me because when I was a young girl, I used to get teased and called Bucky Beaver, Ditch Digger. I oh. think because I was so, back then I was a little, just a little smaller. So I, I just felt like my teeth just didn't grow into my to my face yet. That was, that was it. <laughs> but yeah, that was another part of, you know, um, things that tear you down, mm -hmm. um, the bullying, um, um you know, friends that walk away, you don't know why they walk away or wondering why you're not invited somewhere and everybody else is going or, you know, you feel like you have a connection with something or someone and then all of a sudden it's gone. And you, again, start to self-doubt, you self-destruct. That's what we do. Um, but you said something. What is it? What, what do I see in me? What, what do you see in you? And so when I started reflecting on what I saw in me, I had to look at how I love, how I give, how I take care of, how I sacrifice. Um, and when all those things come together, that's when you say, I'm worth. Yes. I'm yes. worthy. Yes, you are worthy. I know how to love. Yes. I know how to sacrifice. Yes. I know how to give. Mm -hmm. I know how to be there. Mm -hmm. I can jump out of my bed. I don't care if it is the person that has hurt me the worst. Mm -hmm. If they need me, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what I feel. It doesn't matter what they've done. I need to move 
because what I don't want is that to me to be the last person that they called if they're if they're contemplating suicide. I have to put everything aside. I have to put all my feelings, all my emotions, all my hurts, all of that to the side because that love that I have supersedes anything that anybody can do to me. Mm. And it's that love that will make you move. Love is not envious. Love is kind. Love is patient. And so and and nobody is perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. And so I want to be that person or that soft place to land or that person that you can go to and say, you know, I, I need help. I need somebody to talk to. I know we don't talk every day, but I, I need to get this out. And I just want to be able to be there. Um, I, I don't care what that person has done. Um, if I'm trying to get you through a process or if I'm trying to get you or to get off the ledge, or if you're thinking about contemplating suicide, if I'm that last person of contact, I need to put all everything else to the side and I need to be able to minister to that person. Mm-hmm. And that's how I look at life. Yes. And that, that's a beautiful place to be. That unconditional love. Well, that's a beautiful place to be. And I can just it just it just pours off you. It just flows off you. And I just thank God for you because He wanted you to love others like you've never been hurt yes. before. Yes. And it shows. It really shows. And I just thank you for being able to be so courageous to share your story. Because we need that. We really need that. We need to hear more about stories like yours. Because I know there are others. Even if the the woman, um, um, Chelsea Christ, the Miss America, uh, former Miss America, um, perfect on the outside. Mm -hmm. But we don't know what was going on on the inside when she took her life um, recently. Um, a lot of pain. That's a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. And my heart goes out to her family and that we weren't able to yeah. help establish some prevention there for her because we just don't know what a person is is dealing with inside. We don't know the distress. We don't, don't know the turmoil. So we have to look at a couple of areas. We have to look at um, interpersonal relationships, mm. what's happening on interpersonally for us. If it's something that's going on in the family or if it's something that's going on with a relationship, a romantic relationship, or even a friend, um, and for uh, what's going on at the job, what's happening career-wise, and even for our children, what's happening in school, what's their friends like, are they being bullied, Um, is there pressure with uh, same-sex relations, we have to look at the interpersonal relations, what's going on with the person, because that is a a high-risk area for suicide. And then we want to look at substance abuse, if there's anything going on regarding drugs and alcohol, because that's another high risk area. We want to make sure that we're, we're uh, staying connected with people. And are, are they drinking more? Are they smoking more? Are they getting involved with drugs that they hadn't done before? And, and we want to notice, notice the behaviors. Uh, is a person sleeping more, sleeping less, finding their moods are changing a lot, um, being, you know, We have to pay attention to these things. And then once you pay attention to them, now reach out. Reach out. How can I help? What's what's going on? I've been noticing this about you. Uh, Talk to me. What's going on? What's going on? With the soft approach, Mm -hmm. not a hard harsh approach. You know, sometimes uh, uh, people of color, we can be attacking. What's wrong with you? No, get it together. Mm -mm. (laughs) No. No, come with a soft approach. Um, my sister, I, I'm noticing that you're having a difficult time. Can we talk about it? What's going on? How can I help? I want to listen. Yeah. That's in every area of our life. Yes. That's on the job. That's in the home. That's in the church. How can I help? It's not what you say. 
it's how you're saying it. Um, when you say it's soft and concerning and you're gentle, people are more receptive. But when you come aggressive and abrasive and hard and harsh and judgmental, then you are just another person that is giving them what they've already what they're already receiving. Um, we don't know what people deal with on a daily basis um, in life, on their jobs, um, working from home, not working from home. Um, people, you know, being judgment. I don't I, I don't want to judge. I don't. I I am not perfect, and I tell my kid, my children that mm -hmm. that my you know I, I tell my children are thirty one and twenty six years old, and I keep up with them, and they keep up with me. I know where my children are. Um, I know I can call them in the middle of the night, and they can call me in the middle of the night. Um, and, and yes, I'm still, you know, their mother, but they're adults now, but I still keep up with my children. I still know where their mental state in. I, I like to know about their good days and I like to know about their bad days. So if I can help or if I can be of assistance, I'm there. I don't want them to struggle and not think that there's nobody here for them to go to. If you can't call a friend, a cousin, an uncle, you can still at 31 and 26 call mommy and mommy is going That's to right. make it happen. And daddy will, too. So, you know, it's just um, right. it's just a part. You have to f surround yourself around positive people. Yes. You have to get you a good support group. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm I say in 2022. I say in 2022, it's all about you. All right. In 2022, it's all about me and what I can do to help somebody get through what I've already been through. Mm -hmm. Once you have been strengthened, mm -hmm. then you go back and you pull your sister or your brother yes. up. You don't leave them. Yeah. You don't leave them there. If you know they're in a bad place, don't mm -hmm. talk about them. If you know sister girl's coming to church and her her dress is too short or her shirt is, you know, got too, you don't break them. No. You don't break them. Mm -hmm. You bring some stuff to church on the down low and say, you know, you look like my size. I had these things in the closet with tags still on them. Right. And guess what? Right. You can have them if you want them but you don't you don't it. break them I you don't it. if you can't do anything to help don't say anything at all that's right because we want to bring the love of christ into mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. we want them to know that they are loved and let's talk more about how how now that you're on the other side of things and the healing process and have walked through the journey how God is moving in your life now. Ooh, so it is just so amazing to me because um, I say all the time, I don't like big crowds. I don't like a lot of people. One-on-one, um, -on -one, I'm amazing with ministering and um, help. Um, but I believe that God is taking me out of my comfort zone. And um, he's just showing me day by day my worth. Um, he's showing me day by day that words matter. Um, and he's showing me day by day that actions matter. Um, you know, what you do to others, I believe, will come back in some kind of form, shape, or form um, whatsoever, man. So that shall you also reap. You reap what you sow. So I'm trying to sow some good seeds. I'm trying to put some some good seeds in the ground. I'm trying to, mm -hmm. you know, be more profitable to the women and, and men. And I, I say she found her as a foundation of ministry to, to give – women and men, a soft place to land, a place to heal, um, a place to rediscover who they are. 
But I believe that that God is going to allow me to turn that into a transitional house for women and men. That has been one of my desires oh, as well wonderful. to ha- have a transitional house for for women and men to transition to 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 find themselves again to to rediscover yes. um, themselves again and. I know God trusts me. I've learned through this process that God has given me things that he trusts me with. He knows that no matter what, I'm going to I'm going to always fall back on him. I haven't always been there, but I know the things that God has giving me, given me, he trusts me with them now. So, you know, even with the foundation, I know God is going to give me this transitional house because he tested me when I was taking, you know, people in my own home and trying to help them get to the next level or through the next process. And I don't justify what happened in my marriage, but what I will say is that when you bring, um, my grandfather always told me, it's the outside forces. Mm. It's the outside forces that yes. can ruin yes. a marriage. Yes. They play a significant part in it. Um, I didn't have financial problems. I didn't, you know, anything like that. But I had other things that I brought into my safe place where where there was supposed to be the peace and and um, you know, children, other families, and things like that. And it's not because I didn't want to help; it's because I had the love to help. Mm-hmm. And so, because I had the love to help, I, that's why I know God trusts me. He's going to trust me with this foundation in this transitional house because he because I showed myself, I proved myself with with taking care of them in my home. And so that transitional housing is going to come to pass. I know God trusts me. Um, I'm on the other side of it because I'm stronger now. Um, I continue to pray. Um, I'm working hard to, um, you know, just get to that next level of where God um, wants me. I didn't stop going to church. I didn't stop praying. Mm -hmm. So broken, Mm -hmm. I was still going to church. Um, Feeling hopeless, I would still get up and do praise and worship. Mm -hmm. And I believe that every time I did that, God was giving me strength. He was giving me more joy. He was was giving me that peace. And you just don't know how it will lift you up, how it will empower you, how the word will Mm -hmm. strengthen you. And I think that's you know, being on the other side of it yes. is yes. now I have the tools. Mm-hmm. I know what to do. Yes. Um, I know what to fall back on. Mm-hmm. Um, I know what not to dwell in. Mm-hmm. Um, I know how to keep it moving now. Yes. All right. All um, right. You're not trying to go with me. If you're not trying to move forward with me, I'm sorry. This is just a place. And I used to cry because I wasn't invited places or I, you know, I, I wasn't invited to sit at the table And then, you know, I realized that God was creating a table for me. If you're never invited, I'm creating this platform, a table for you to minister to broken women. Your marriage might not have survived infidelity, but it's not the infidelity. It's you that is that's the survivor. That's right. The survivor right. is in me. That's right. The the survivor is not in the low self esteem or the lack of love or the infidel. The survivor is in me. I'm still here. T- I'm on the other side of it. Yes. I'm I'm here yes. talking about it. Yes. Um. God kept me in perfect peace. Yes. So when I sing and I say, God, I thank you for for keeping my mind. God, I thank you for the peace that I have. It's because God kept me in perfect peace. I said, if you can think, you can thank. If God is still allowing you to think, that means you're, you're, you still got to form in your right mind. Yes. So if I can think, I can thank thank him for everything that he's Praise done for God. me. Yes, that is that is so true. And that's what I've been in the scripture today. I want to bring this scripture forth in Hebrews 12 and 3. But I want to read it from God's word translation. Okay. That's just so impactful. 
Think about Jesus who endured opposition from sinners so that you don't become tired and give up. Mm. You Think about what he went through. Yes. All of the beating, all of the, the persecution talked about when he did nothing wrong. Hairs was pulled out of his chin, beaten, spit on. And that's the worst thing, mm-hmm. you know, we can mm-hmm. have happen. Mm-hmm. Spit on. He did all of that so that we don't become tired yes. and give up. And I'm so glad that those men were there because now we have this beautiful radiant flower of love who's going to be able to help other people. And I am so thankful for that. So, so women and men who may have been contemplating, here's another part of the scripture in, in Hebrews 12 and 12 from God's words translate, translation. Strengthen your tired arms and weak knees. Keep walking along straight paths so that your injured leg won't get worse. Mm. Instead, let it heal. Let it heal. Stay on the straight path no matter what is happening. Stay on the straight path so you can heal. Because when you venture off, always say, Lord, don't let me go to the left. Don't let me go to the right. Keep me on straight street. When you venture off, you can't heal because you're running into more turmoil, Mm -hmm. more problems. Mm -hmm. But even though we're tired, even though we're weary, keep going. Because in due season, she's going to reap that harvest. God's going to give her that transitional home. So we just have to, we have to use the tools. There's ways to get the tools Talk to someone. Don't isolate. Mm-hmm. Stay with the word of God that you know to be true. We don't. We can't go by. We don't feel them. We can't go by our feelings. We go by what we know to be true. And reach out. Get the help that you need because help is there. And when they come to us, beloved, be available. Listen. Help them walk through that storm. We need help. It's, it's necessary. We need it. We need it. We do need we it. We need it. Um, delight yourself in the Lord. The scripture that talks about Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in me and let, your, and let me become the desires of your heart. A little change at the end. Let, yeah. let God become the desire, desires of your heart. You know, he says he will give us the desires of our heart. Let God become the desires of your heart, beloved. When he becomes the desires of your heart, everything is available. Yeah. Everything is available because he wants what's best for you. So can I just go back on something I said? When I said that I, I love like I've never been hurt, mm-hmm. I don't believe that a person can heal by hurting someone else. Very true. That's good. Because you're going to carry... That's very true. That with you as well. So that's another, that's something else that you have to. Forgiveness. Yes. That you, ha- and you have to carry it with you. And now you got to get through that because you've hurt somebody mm-hmm. that didn't even do anything to you or that you don't even know. You can't heal. Yeah. You can't heal your hurt by hurting someone else. And then my favorite scripture, my favorite scripture is Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God has plans for me. God has plans for me. Great plans for me to give me a hope hope and a great future. And so I'm walking in that. I'm walking yes. in that that purpose. If I never get a dollar, if I never get a dollar, you uh for for what I do for ministry, for for the help, um, I know that is my purpose. I still know at the end of the day, that is my purpose. That is what I sacrifice for, is to help somebody else, is to love on somebody else. Um, if we just love a little more, we just love a little more. We he that loveth it. not knoweth not God, oh. for God is love. love. Absolutely, yes. God is love. Yes, we should be is. walking. We should be walking in love. We should look like love. 
um, no matter what we've been through. Mm -hmm. Um, And like I said, it doesn't come overnight. It is a process. Yes. It is a process. It is a process. It can be a slow process. Mm -hmm. A slow process. But no, beloved. God said he'll never leave you nor forsake Never, you. never. Just hold tight to never. his hand and the promises of God. I'd like to, on our last two things, we got time for the last two things as okay. we're closing. One, if you would speak to that person who may be contemplating suicide, if you would speak to them and give them a word of encouragement. And then after that, if you would close us in a song. She's... A worship leader, y'all. So if I would speak to the person that um, feels hopeless, um, you've had thoughts of suicide, um, I would have to say to you, you can make it. Um, Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. Um, When you seem like you're walking alone, Just know that God is yet carrying you. You um, reach out, speak up, talk to somebody, um, scream. If, If it's screaming, yelling to the top of your lungs, whatever it is that you have to do, I want you to know that um, you can reach out to me. I will, I will give you direction. I will direct you in the right, in the right path, but I don't want you to give up. I want you to know that you are loved, that you are appreciated, that yes, you may have fallen, but you just get right back up. And if you fall again, you get right back up and you keep going at it. Don't stop. Don't give up. Don't let go. Speak up, speak out reach out. And then from there, um, you know, you start the process, go, go and get help. Talk to somebody, get some counseling. Um, if, if there's nobody in your circle, you can go to change your circle and make sure that you surround yourself around positive people who can identify when your mood is changed when you're crying a lot, when you're isolating yourself, um, if you if you feel like you're getting to that point, reach out to somebody, say something yes. to somebody. Yeah, that's what I would tell that person that is contemplating suicide or feeling like um, giving up. Thank you, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Yes, be encouraged, beloved. Be encouraged. There Be encouraged. is hope. You are not hopeless or helpless. Reach out. Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. And someone will listen. We will listen. You can always contact me, Dr. Cynthia, at 440-343-8069. And I'm going to post some mobile crisis numbers and the suicide hotline, which is 800-273-TALK. T-A-L-K, 800-273-TALK. And now our dear sister is going to end with blessing us in song. So I don't, I don't even, this song, um, there's a girlfriend of mine that sings this song, and I don't even know all the words to it. I just know that it's just this part that um, of the song Uh, You can make it, you can make it, no matter what you're going through, God is going to see you through, you can make it, you can make it, no matter what you're going through, God is going to see you through. But you can make it. Amen. Yes. yes, yes, that was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And very Thank encouraging. You. Thank you. Very encouraging. Well, beloved, you can make it. You can make it. And if you do not know my Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, all you have to do is believe that he died for you, for your sins and mine, and that he rose on the third day. 
and you can have eternal life just yes. like we do. It's just like that. It's 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 free. It's free. Now there may be some some bumps along the way, yes. but that's because God loves you and he wants the best for you. So, beloved, I thank you for being with us today. And we will see you again on February 26th, where we will welcome you back again with another podcast of Women of Purpose. I am Reverend Dr. Cynthia Woods with my lovely guest, Lynette Hagens, who is a woman of God and founder of She She Found Found Her Her Ministries. And I just love her to life and I love you to life, beloved. And be blessed. Remember, reach out to someone else. Listen to them. If they're having a hardship, they're saying that they're not feeling like themselves, listen and let's help one another. Let's normalize this conversation of suicide. Let's talk about it more so we can prevent it from happening as much as it's happening. God bless you, beloved. I love you. This is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Until next time on the fourth Saturday, God bless you and peace be with you.